Hi, this is Stacy Higginbotham with GigaOM, and I'm here in Austin at the Network Ready Lab for AT&T with Cameron Corsi, who is an Assistant Vice President of Product Realization for the M2M and Emerging Devices that AT&T is going to allow on their network. Hi, Cameron. Hi, Stacy. How are you? I'm doing well. Well, today we're going to do a tour, but first I wanted to ask you a couple questions, starting with, you guys open this lab, what's it for, why does AT&T care? Sure. Well, it's to test both emerging devices and M2M devices before they get used on our network uh, to make sure that our network is protected uh, for this new batch of devices that are going to explode in the, uh, the wireless world. And so these are anything that I can use that doesn't have the AT&T brand name. It's not a phone. So we're thinking things like my netbook. We're talking M to M, yes. or what would those be? Well, e-readers and consumer electronics, like uh, personal navigation devices. In the M to M world, we talk about um, uh, smart grid technology, automotive um, tracking, fleet tracking capabilities and devices, things like that. OK, great. And right now, how many devices like this has AT&T certified for their network? We've certified over a thousand of them since 2005, so we've been pretty busy. Awesome. And so talk to me about what kind of tests need to happen before AT&T gives a device the green light. We test the radio performance of the devices. We make sure that they transmit and receive on the right channels and at the right uh, power levels. We test the protocol between the network and the device to make sure that the two are talking together correctly. We make sure that the uh, device selects the right network and hands off to the right cell site, and then when it roams, it attaches to the right network. So for a consumer or for someone who's a business relying on the M2M network, what are the advantages of this? I mean, my phone stays on the right network. It, I, I don't know what, like, make it tangible for me as a consumer. Sure, it helps to ensure that the device is compatible with the network, that it works well with it, that uh, you don't have uh, problems with the device uh, talking to the network when you use it, that you're not stranded somewhere where the device can't work for you. Okay, and is this also where you kind of make sure devices are locked into the AT&T network if they need to be, or is that somewhere else? Well, it makes sure that when the device is powered on that it can quickly find the AT&T network if it's available. And if it's not available, that it finds the next best network for the customer to roam on so that they get the best rates. Okay. And how long does a device need to be tested in the lab? What's that process kind of like? Well, the process that we use uh, takes about four weeks to uh, test a device from beginning to end. In the lab here, we can get through the testing in a week. Um, and uh, if it's automated, it takes less time than that. Okay, and if I'm thinking about getting a device certified on the AT&T network, what step is this in the process? Can you take me through the whole process, or? This is, uh, first the, the partner has to decide upon what technology they want in the device, and they have to design the device and make sure that um, they are uh, uh, meeting the FCC requirements and, and some other industry uh, testing that they have to do, and then they would bring their, lab, their device to AT&T for the lab testing that would happen, and then in some cases the device has to go to the field as well for testing. Okay. Do you know, can you tell me what kind of devices have to be field tested? Um, the te devices that are typically branded AT&T would have to be tested in the field, and then any modules that are embedded into even the open access devices we make sure we test in the field to make sure that they work properly before they get integrated into an open access device. Awesome. Okay. And then anything else you want to tell me about this particular lab? You guys just recently opened it. Sure. Why is it so important for you guys? We're dedicated to this space, to the emerging device space and the MDM, and uh, we want to make sure that we have adequate facilities, both people and, and lab resources so that we can uh, get all the devices tested that we need to. Okay, and because everybody really loves it, I gotta ask you, with something like the iPhone, or maybe other exciting smartphones you guys are pulling through, would they come through here or do they go through a different lab? Well, you never know what's gonna pass through this lab, but there's gonna be some hot stuff. Awesome, we'll look forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay, so now what we're doing is we're going into a screen room at the AT&T Open Device Lab where they're going to test these things. And this is Niha. She is a test engineer. And why don't you tell me kind of what we're looking at here, what we're testing? Okay, we test here, uh, uh, actually we test, uh, we do here protocol testing. And this is an anode system which is being used for this protocol testing. This actually simulates a virtual at and network. This particular thing simulates a one-cell one scenario and likewise these four things will simulate four-cell scenarios. These four cells are combined with this combiner and, and an RF signal which is being generated is being sent to this test unit through this cable. Then this hardware is being used with a software which is present in the system and everything has been already scripted as in for the at and requirement and uh, we can see all the layer of messages which are being transmitted from the test unit to the network and the network responding back to those messages through this window. They are all coming into this window. Okay, and how many, what kind of messages are we talking about? Uh, we basically, there are a number of messages like location update whenever we turn on the phone and the device goes for a location update, then whenever we browse something, some GPRS attachments, some calls. Okay, so when I, for example, when I turn on the phone, how many messages are being generated back to the network? Uh, when we just turn on, there are about 20 messages okay. back and forth. Yeah. And so, of total, there are hundreds of messages that can be generated by my phone talking to the network? Yes, more than 100 probably, and there are about 600 scenarios, so you can count them. Okay, and so you're testing all of these against netbooks and phones, or netbooks and... This is something confidential which I cannot okay. speak. Yeah. And so what kind of, you're just making sure these things go through correctly and they go through quickly? Yes, as okay. the specified times. You know, everything has a specific time duration which, you know, as in like a emergency call should become something, you know, some specific period, like for some standards, as the standards. Okay, so thing, it makes sure things like emergency calls get priority over other messages? Definitely. Okay. Wow. Once the phone should be registered on it. Right, right. <laughs> as long as it's a legitimate device. All right. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, sure. All right. Hi, I'm here with Sampreet, who's a network engineer with AT&T, and she's going to tell me about what takes place in this particular testing lab. Hi. Uh, this is CRTUW, the Rodden Shaw setup, and basically we use this for the 3G protocol testing. So this is the 3G unit of the whole setup and this is the 2G unit and the combined output of these two we fit to the device that we need to test. We fit this to the antenna of the particular device and we test the device for the 3G, uh, for the 3G protocols. And this is the software that we use for testing the particular sections. And this is the slave window where we can see all the messages that transfer between the device and the simulator that what is it going on. And here we test the various IRAT scenarios, RAB multi RAB scenarios. Like suppose a person is walking and particularly he is in the GSM cell. And while walking he goes into the different cell.